Welcome back. We've actually finished level one through level six of the right developmental model. But there is one additional level, level seven. And it's different. It doesn't have a regressive or a progressive pole, but it does have transcendental principles. So it's a little different than the other levels. The transcendental principles include love, peace, forgiveness. And I believe by working level one through six, we kind of get to experience love and peace and forgiveness. I personally don't believe like to experience purpose and to experience life that you go sit on top of a mountain and meditate and hope that your purpose comes to you. I personally believe swing at everything. Go experience life. Strive like crazy. Level one, feel fear. Experience it. Shut down. Feel it. Scarcity, trust, aliveness. Level two, create new hurts. Bless you for just feeling hurt because at least then I feel alive. Right? And really affirmed by that and engage in life fully. Reactivity, feel my anger. Doesn't mean I need to express it, but can I ride that horse to getting what I want in life and to intending a result that I want? Conform, belong, be part of groups, and don't be part of groups. Express the truth, make mistakes, clean them up, right? We don't always express the truth in rapport. Strive, get things, accomplish, feel, I got it. And then like, well, but it doesn't feel that great. And let my purpose evolve and then come to that commitment and be superior, do great things, create a great company, but can I take that to do something different? Can I author my life? Can I not be a victim? Can I not blame? And can I take responsibility for something greater like the whole world? And then I hope if I'm swinging at everything and doing my best, I hope that God or spirit or life will fill in the gaps for me. And I'll feel peace. And I'll feel forgiveness for my mistakes. And I'll feel loved unconditionally. Really live in to you. Live into the unique you with different talents and skills and gifts. You may have noticed we've done three seasons. This is our third season. The first season was Live Richly. The second season was Shine Brightly. And now this season is Love Lionheartedly. And you may or may not have picked us up, but it actually follows my name. My first name is Rich, so Live Richly. My middle name is Bright, a family name, so Shine Brightly. And my last name is Lions, Love Lionheartedly. So live into your name, live into your skills, live into your gifts. And hopefully this model will help you kind of live that life and enjoy the moments regardless of if it's fear or hurt or anger or sadness or joy. Enjoy the little moments. Enjoy the little differences. Feel the differences and truly feel life fully. In one of my leadership groups, I was telling some younger guys, don't wait until you're 58 to be you. I'll be 58 this year, and the point is, don't wait live your life, be you, express you, take risks, develop hurts, fall down, and then choose to get back up. Be hurt and say ouch. Be afraid and do it anyway. That's courage. And live life fully and just love lionheartedly. To find more of my content on life and sales and leadership, you can follow me on LinkedIn. You can sign up for my newsletter, the Rich Minute, and you can also go to my website, richlions.com. I hope to see you again, and until then, live and love lionheartedly. The journey, which prior to this was torture because all you wanted to do was get there, is now beginning to become a pleasure. It is the pleasure of searching and the pleasure of an adventure. You are nourishing something that's very important your dreams. You must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul just as a meal does for the body. Many times in our lives we see our dreams shattered and our desires frustrated 
but we have to continue dreaming. If we don't, our soul dies and agape, love, cannot reach it because we have ceased to fight the good fight. The good fight is the one we fight because our heart asks it of us. In the heroic ages, at the times of the knights in armor, this was easy. Today, though, the world has changed, and the good fight has shifted from the battlefields to the fields within ourselves. The good fight is the one that's fought in the name of our dreams. When we were young and our dreams first explode inside us with all their force, we are very courageous, but we haven't yet learned how to fight. With great effort, we learn how to fight, but then we no longer have the courage to do combat. So we turn against ourselves and do the battle within. We become our own worst enemy. We say that our dreams are too childish or too difficult to realize or the result of our not having known enough about life. We kill our dreams because we are afraid to fight the good fight. The first symptom of the process of our killing our dreams is the lack of time. The busiest people I have known in my life always have time enough to do everything. Those who do nothing are always tired and pay no attention to the little amount of work they are required to do. They complain constantly that their day is too short. The truth is, they are afraid to fight the good fight. The second symptom of the death of our dreams lies in our certainties. Because we don't want to see life as a grand adventure, we begin to think of ourselves as wise and fair and correct in asking so little of life. We look beyond the walls of our day-to-day existence and we hear the sound of lances breaking. We smell the dust and the sweat and we see the great defeats and the fire in the eyes of the warriors. But we never see the delight, the immense delight in the hearts of those who are engaged in the battle. For them, neither victory nor defeat is important. What's important is only that they are fighting the good fight. And finally, The third symptom of the passing of our dreams is peace. Life becomes a Sunday afternoon. We ask for nothing grand, and we cease to demand anything more than we are willing to give. In that state, we think of ourselves as being mature. We put aside the fantasies of our youth, and we seek personal and professional achievement. We are surprised when people our age say that they still want this or that of life. But really, deep in our hearts, We know that what has happened is that we have renounced the battle for our dreams. We have refused to fight the good fight. When we renounce our dreams and find peace, we go through a short period of tranquility. But the dead dreams begin to rot within us and to infect our entire being. We become cruel to those around us, and then we begin to direct this cruelty against ourselves. What we sought to avoid in combat Disappointment and defeat come upon us because of our cowardice. And one day the dead, spoiled dreams make it difficult to breathe, and we actually seek death. It's death that frees us from our certainties, from our work, and from that terrible peace of our Sunday afternoons. You too have to learn how to fight the good fight. The only way we can rescue our dreams is by being generous with ourselves. Any attempt to inflict self-punishment, no matter how subtle it may be, should be dealt with rigorously. Paulo Coelho, The Pilgrimage That was really amazing. That's real. (laughs) Done? Walk out, drop, or mic drop? I don't know. Well, that summarizes the model, right? I mean, <laughs> I if there was anything else I needed to say about the model. I'm like hanging on every word. You're so in your flow. <laughs> <laughs>